for the last for the last years, they have been fighting the HMOs and health insurance companies that have turned out to be the greatest threat to public health and safety in the United States today. Talk about battles. Twelve years ago, we and the nurses were campaigning across the state for a patient's rights law. We ended up in a fist fight in Fresno with some thugs hired by the insurance industry to break up a press conference we were having. Sometimes a fight really is a fight. By the way, it turns out that if you hang out with the nurses for a little while, you can expect this thing to happen on a routine basis. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. You want to know what I most enjoyed <laughs> about that night in Fresno? Getting to actually throw a punch at someone who worked for the insurance industry. One, one day, CNA is going to KO the for-profit health insurance system in our country, and we're going to right, be right beside them. A few days ago, Dennis Quaid told Congress that, quote, like many Americans, I believed that a big problem in our country was frivolous lawsuits. But now I know that the courts are the, often the only path to justice for families that are harmed by the pharmaceutical industry and medical errors, unquote. That single statement so riled up a, a fool named Re Congressman Brian Bilbray from San Diego that he blamed the crib death of his own child on frivolous lawsuits. Dennis Quaid, like many, many less famous Americans throughout our history, will get his day in court because of the relentless dedication of attorneys like those people to here tonight, lawyers like Bill Chernoff, Brown Green, Bruce Burlett, Herb Half, and of course our winner, Mike Bedard. By the way, neither lawyers nor nurses have a lock on outrage. You know the actor Kevin Dunn from many movies and television, but when real, real estate developers in him, his hometown of Sierra Madre plotted to turn that lovely little community into a strip mall, Kevin and his wife, Katina, organized a grassroots ballot initiative to stop him. It passed, and then they made sure that Sierra Madre elected officials would enforce the law. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Kevin and Katina Dunn and meet the new mayor of Sierra Madre, Kurt Zimmerman. Where are you guys? The reason why this dinner is so inspiring year after year is because all of us share what Congressman Philip Burton and his biographer, sorry, share what Congress Phil, Congressman Philip Burton's biographer described as, quote, a seething, perpetual sense of outrage. This has never been a job for any of us. This is how we live. This is who we are. This is why we are still working long past when the insurance industry's lawyers try to find solace for their souls in sleep. But tonight, for one night, we stand down just long enough to celebrate our victories, lick our wounds, and replenish our resources. I stand before you this evening deeply honored to be in the presence of so many who have a rage for justice. I have time to answer one more question about myself tonight. People wonder if I haven't changed over the years. Haven't, well, I guess Dennis Quaid saw a change in me, but I didn't detect that. <laughs> People wonder, have I grown disillusioned or discouraged? Well, I sure hope I've changed. For one thing, I'm the father of two amazing kids, and you learn an awful lot from that. For example, a few months ago, my daughter Maisie, wanting to make sure that I did not get too full of myself here tonight, decided that she was going to attend her high school senior prom this evening. Instead, she's about a mile away as we speak over at the Beverly Hilton. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> but my son Cody is here. I'm going to have to add him to my insurance policy very shortly. He's a 16. And so is my wife, Georgia Bragg. Would you stand up, guys? I, I really love you. I really love you. And yes, there have been some difficult defeats. 
It seems that for every achievement like Prop 103, there have been so many more setbacks. And of course, you look around in the state and in the world today, and it's hard to feel good about anything. But that just means we have more work to do. And on that note, I want to conclude with some unfinished business. Those of you who knew me back in 1988 knew that you know now that Proposition 103 wasn't just about lowering auto insurance rates. It was my answer to the insurance industry's charge that high insurance raise, rates were caused by frivolous lawsuits and that the only way to lower insurance rates was to restrict the right of people who are injured or ripped off to go to court. That nonsense first gained traction here in California back in 1975 when then Governor Jerry Brown signed a law capping the amount of compensation a jury can award to a victim of medical malpractice. Those caps never lowered rates for doctors by one cent. Only Prop 103 did that. But the caps are still in place. A vicious disease that has spread like a virus across the country, allowing HMOs, hospitals, and the medical industry to cut corners knowing that they won't be held accountable. We are going to repeal those caps. And I don't care, I don't care who stands in our way. So uh, am I going to rest on my laurels, to, uh, the laurels that you have laid upon me tonight? No effing way. I am going to heed the poet Dylan Thomas, and I urge you to join me. Here's what he wrote. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. See you all at the bar.